right, today we are going to focus on details view. We've looked at grid view for the past few times. Um, details view is most, more much of what I said about details view, I'm sorry, about grid view also applies to details view. So it's really not that much different. But the, the added dimension is that there is uh, input, or, uh, or insert rather, uh, that you're able to insert from a details view. And that means, that's a little awkward, um, unless you kind of take the, the bull by the horns. I, I swear I was not thinking of that, uh, not thinking of your cow situation when I said that, but I realized it instantly. Uh, and, and, and do something and go from, and deviate a little bit from sort of the, the default behavior. You know, remember, and I can't stress this enough, you know, if you want to drive me crazy and you want to see me really, really flip out, um, tell me one time that, that this is what Visual Studio did, all right? Why does your code work that way? Well, that's what Visual Studio did. No, that's, Visual Studio is a tool, you know. The hammer doesn't build the cabinet. The carpenter builds the cabinet, right? So if the cabinet is good or if the cabinet is bad, it's not, the credit doesn't go to the hammer. The credit goes to the carpenter. So the same thing here. Um, the idea of using uh, a framework and components is it gives you a head start and it gives you some default behavior that you can build upon. Um, as I said before when we talk about grid views, very rarely is the default behavior going to like be enough and, and really do it for you. That you're going to have to in some way, shape or form, tweak the default behavior to get it to really work. You know, they've given you sort of a baseline of functionality that everyone is going to need, but then you need to tweak it to make it work for your situation. So we're going to take a look at the fact that you can insert on a grid view and I'll show you how I like to handle it. All right. Not to say that it's the only right answer, but it's the way that, that I typically handle it. So let's go and let's start out by opening what we had last time. And we're going to add a grid, uh, I'm sorry, details view a couple different ways to this. Let me pull one of these up. spend a second and see what I really want to do here. Which one I want to build off of. how they said that, you know, you never see the hourglass in Windows 7, you know, Windows 7 or Windows 8 or whatever, because they replaced it by the little swirly thing, so you don't see the hourglass anymore. I just made that up. I don't know if they actually said that. <laughs> All right. I'm going to link to a details view here. All right. Now, I realize that we can already add it and delete on this grid view. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to get rid of that functionality. And instead, I'm going to link to a details view. All right. So let me go in here and let me get rid of enable editing and enable de uh, um, deleting. Let me go and edit the template to get rid of this little... And I'm going to create a column in here to go to a poll 
detail or polls detail page. So I'm going to go here, edit columns. What kind of column is this going to be if it's going to be a link to the polls detail page? Hyperlink. Hyperlink. All right. So I'm going to make the text be the word details. What do I need to pass to the details page if this is a detail of a particular poll? What do I need to pass on the query string? The poll ID. Yeah, the poll ID, the primary key. All right. We have to know which one we picked. And anytime in a database where you're talking about like the specific row, you're interested in a specific row, the primary key is what you go after. So, in this case, that's going to be the data navigate URL field. That's what we're going to pass. It's going to be the poll ID. Now, what about this data navigate URL field? What does it look like? Question mark equal to Okay. Okay. Well, what we want first of all is we want the name of the page. All right, so I'll call the page poll detail .aspx. And then that's not enough, right? We have to pass the field that we specified up here on the query string. So how do we do that? Well, we put in the question mark for the query string, and we say ID equals, and we want to pass this field. The way we designate that is with the curly bracket, zero curly bracket. That indicates that I want to pass um, the poll ID, which is the first field in that list. We could pass multiple fields on the list all right, uh, if we needed to. If, for example, there was a two-part key, we could pass both parts of the key uh, if we wanted to. But in this case, it's a single-part key, so we only pass that. Questions? You would concatenate those with an ampersand in that string? Yes, there'd be uh, a query string is always question mark field name equals value. If there's more values, it will be ampersand field two equals value two ampersand field three equals value three. Now I said I just wanted the text to be details, but I could make the text one of the columns from the table. So I could make it where if you click on the poll uh, question, it takes you to this page. All right. I like to do it a couple of ways. You know, I, I've done it the one way a couple times. I'll do it this way a couple times, and we'll go back and forth just to show you. You can either hard code some message to say details, or you can make it a field that you click on. Whatever makes sense for your particular design. Okay, so this should give us that field. All right, sure enough, details. If I run this, Pardon me? Yeah. No, I don't have the target page yet. But I can still check to make sure that the link worked, right? By either doing a view source or I can hover over the link and see what pops up in the status bar. So, yeah, you're right. I, I, I'm, I'm not that brain addled this morning. Um, maybe later. <laughs> and we look at this again we see again if I put my mouse over that I can see down in the status bar that the link appears correct assuming these are polls 1, 2, and 3 which I'm pretty sure they are uh, the other way I could do it of course is do a view source and look at the source code that actually gets generated Which apparently you can't zoom in this. All right. But there we go. That link is indeed correct. All right. 
So now I can go and actually create the page. So I can go in here and say new file web form call pull detail I'm going to add to it a grid view oh, I'm sorry details view and a SQL data source SQL data source. Someone tell me what to do. <laughs> Let me rephrase that question. <laughs> Someone tell me how to complete this wizard. You want to hit the drop down. Uh-huh. Connection. connection string. Okay. And next. Who, whoever said next doesn't get credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do I do now? What do I do on this page? Custom SQL statement. Fair enough. Because we're not, you know, we're not about the. We're not cheap. We're not cheap. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're tough. <laughs> and what's my select statement going to worry? Wor uh, uh, look like? We're not going to worry about insert, update, and delete right now. But what will my select statement look like? Select. How do I indicate all? Star. Star. From. Polls. Where? Where? Question mark. I don't know. Where poll ID equals question mark. Oh, there you go. Or we could say where question mark equals poll ID. That would work too. All right. What do we put in here? Primary source is query string, and is what? ID. ID. All right, excellent. We can test the query, make sure it works. Oh. You know, I think the poll detail, poll details name thing. I don't think. Yeah, it's there poll you put poll details poll. dot ASPX linking. Not sure. This is simply telling me the SQL statement is wrong. So if I did something else wrong on that other page, I might have, but it wouldn't give me that error. Is it called poll? I think so. I think so. Well, we'll find out now, won't we? There we go. We were taught in our database class that it was good practice to keep your table names singular instead of pluralizing the table names. <laughs> uh, as long as you're consistent. It's funny, I typically make them plural. I don't know why I made it the way that one's singular. Because a, a table typically contains more than one thing. Yeah, so it's yeah, it polls. Yeah. yeah. And an individual one is a poll ID. You know, but who knows? Um, Ralph Waldo Emerson said consistency is the hobgoblin of little minds. All right. So that's your quote for the day. Take it up with him. <laughs> All right. We'll go in and we will pick SQL data source. All right. And let's just make sure it's working to this point. Now, of course, the insert, update, delete isn't working yet, but we can at least check it out. All right. So I'm going to go in here and I'll pick a poll and it works. What would happen? What would be the likely cause if when I clicked on that link I got a blank page? I don't know, but that happens to me all the time. <laughs> 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 so I want to know. <laughs> okay. What, what do you think the likely cause would be if I clicked on the link and I got a blank page? I know one problem could be that you didn't correctly name what your query string value was. You didn't get it right. To okay. Well, let, let's let's reverse. Let's 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 chain backwards for this. If we get an empty page, 
we didn't get an error, right? So there's probably not an error per se, right? Remember, if a SQL statement doesn't return anything, that's not an error. SQL's happy if you say, select all students where state equals Alaska. If there's no students from Alaska, it didn't give an error. It told you all the names of all the students from Alaska. You want to hear it again? There, right? So that's not an error. So we didn't get an error. If, if, hypothetically, if this was blank, we didn't get an error. That means that there was no SQL statement. What that means is that there were no rows returned. Well, why might a SQL statement not return any rows? Well, number one is if you didn't hook the link to, if you're not passing the data correctly between the two. And what do I mean by passing the data correctly between the two? What you're calling it on the query string on page one doesn't match up where you're pulling it on page two. So I called it ID, and then I used ID to pull it. If I called it ID on one page and pull on the other, then it would try to pull something called pull from the query string. It wouldn't find it. It would do the query and not get anything. So one likely cause of that is that the, the pages aren't like wired together correctly. You're not passing the data in the way that the second page is expecting. So look at the name on the link, look at the, look at the, the name of the query string fields on the link, and look at the name that the SQL data source is looking at. Okay, so if, like, I know that so we use a primary query pool ID for some reason in the SQL statement if we used a different... Yeah. Like that, that would cause... Yeah, you know, like for example, if you pass pull ID, but you did a query based on, you know, the question. If you use the wrong field, that would also cause it to, to not work. Um, another possibility is if you are linking multiple tables together. All right? In other words, if you have, if you joined several tables together and not all the joins were satisfied. So, for example, if we had, and I know our database doesn't allow it, but if we joined the, the poll table and the category table, and there was a poll without a category. Using what's called an inner join, all of those things have to be there for the join to work. All right? So it has to find a match across all the tables. There's another syntax for what's called an outer join, and that would be where it doesn't have to have uh, a related row in the table. And we can take a look at that if that becomes an issue. That, that could come an issue for some folks on their projects or, again, maybe even on a future assignment. All right. But my suggestion, again, is to, you know, anytime you have an error, you know, see the error. Think of what the possible causes could be. Think about what it's telling you. In this case, it's not giving you an error message in this hypothetical situation, so it's not a syntax error. All right. That means that the SQL statement is probably returning no rows. Well, what are some reasons why a SQL statement returns no rows? Well, there really isn't any match. All right, that would be one possibility. Or I'm plugging in the wrong value, or I'm plugging the, the value into the wrong column when I do the query, or I have joins that aren't being fulfilled. So all those are possible causes for this. So it's good to sort of think through, like, what can cause these things not to work? Uh, so when they don't work, you can systematically go down and look and say, okay, uh, I called an ID on this page. I called an ID on this page, all right? Um, I am using the correct column, you know, and so on. You can eliminate possibilities. Um, what did Sherlock Holmes say when, when you... Uh, when you uh, eliminate oh, something oh, like when you eliminate aren't, right? yeah when you eliminate all the things that are what's left is true no matter how unlikely or something like that he said it better and he, he said it with a British accent too so <laughs> even if he said it the same way it would sound better right so at anyhow so no matter how unlikely it seems you know once you've gotten rid of the impossible scenarios and once you've verified it's correct um, you know that, that gives you a lot of guidance. Um, I can't emphasize enough, you know, just as much as trying to teach you what to do and how to make these things work, it's important to, to, to review how to troubleshoot these things. All right? And this is one of those things that you can't 
teach per se, you can coach maybe is a better word, you know. I could teach you how to write an if statement, right? I could go over, this is how you write an if statement, this is how you write an if statement, all right? But I can't teach you how to troubleshoot, largely because every problem is its own distinct problem, right? But what I can do is sort of help you get into a systematic way of approaching the problems instead of doing what developers, and even some experienced developers do, uh, which is essentially, let's try a bunch of stuff until something works. All right? And, and again, a systematic approach of thinking through, well, what is the symptom I have? What are possible causes for that? How can I verify that that's the case? At any rate, this part worked. So we're, we're ready to do an insert, update, and delete. All right? So I'm going to go here, and I need to change two things. I need to change the data source to put in the insert, update, and delete. I need to change um, the grid or the details view to uh, allow for insert, update, and delete. So let's do this one first. Nice thing is, is I don't even have an option to enable insert, update, and delete because it knows that the data source doesn't allow insert, update, and delete. Right. So I have to do this one first. All right, an update statement. I'm going to pull up the database so I can see what the actual table names and such are. ID, category ID, and question. Good. So, the update statement is going to look something like this. Update, poll, set, question equals question mark, comma, Category ID equals question mark where poll ID equals question mark. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here, all right, and we'll we'll go and we'll make sure this works. Again, always believe in doing things incrementally, you know, just tiny little steps at a time. All right? So I think that's right. We can go and look at it and, and go, from, go from there. Can I ask you a quick question? Yeah. Is set a um, keyword? Yeah, set's just a keyword. Okay. It's before the first, and it's not before any of the other ones. So set only appears once. Column name equals question mark, or column name equals value, comma, column name equals value, comma. When you're at the very end, you don't put the comma after the last one. All right. So we'll do a next, next, finish. Now we're going to look at the code, right? We don't want to be at the mercy of the GUI. Notice there is, associated with the SQL data source, is the actual update command. Now, if you notice, there's no parameters associated with it. This mystifies me a little bit, because sometimes it creates parameters for you, sometimes it doesn't. So. We'll have to see and see if this works. All right. Sometimes it just sort of knows what to put where. 
Other times it creates some parameters, like it did with select parameters. All right. So let's we'll go and we'll, we'll check this out and we'll make sure that it works. Again, I point this out because again you should be somewhat familiar with how the code works. When you're doing all, all that stuff in the GUI, all you're doing is you're writing this file. You could create an ASP.NET site using Notepad if you knew all the properties and, and all the controls and all that, but it would be a, a giant pain, right? The GUI just sort of helps you out to do things. So it's not anything magic. Again, remember, it's just a tool. That's why I get so frustrated when students say Visual Studio did that. It's like, well, you don't like what Visual Studio does? Fine, you know, don't use it. Use Notepad instead. Okay, well, all right, that's probably not a good answer. Uh, but, well, okay then, we'll figure out enough about the code so that you can make it work and not do just the default behavior that Visual Studio does. All right, I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to enable editing on that. Notice now enable editing is an option, or it wasn't before, because there wasn't an update statement associated with it. All right, let's make sure this works. Again, this is, this is good. Frequently during class, I make errors on purpose, not because I'm tired and overworked and stressed, but because I want to test your troubleshooting abilities. All right. Yeah, because I have the, data, the, the database open. When in doubt, read the error message. All right. It's funny because a lot of times the error messages aren't terribly descriptive. But that doesn't mean ignore them all the time. And sometimes they can give you some pretty good advice. For example, the table pull is already open exclusively by another user. Hmm. Open exclusively. What kind of thing would open it exclusively? Oh, if I was looking at the structure of the table within the database. Ah. And I am. So I can close out of here. And let's try it again. All right. And we're back in business. So I can click this for details view, pull that up, I can click edit. I can change the question, get rid of the snarky little giggle there. And I can click update. Data mismatch in Criteria expression. Hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Pardon me? Exactly. exactly. Okay, so this one isn't terribly descriptive. Would it be, I noticed that, I think you're missing a comma in the update yeah. statement. Well, there isn't a comma after the last Yeah, comma. but there isn't a comma after the second one, I really? believe. Yeah. Well, let's look. If that's the case, that could be a problem. They pull, set question equal, question mark, mm -hmm. comma, category D equals question mark, where, because we're, we're in a new clause. Oh, yeah, we're, we're out of the set clause. I was thinking. Okay, this gets into what I said at the beginning. When I put the, the uh, update statement in after the fact, it didn't, um, it didn't uh, create any parameters for it. So, what's happening in a nutshell, what that's saying is that it doesn't really know how to put the values in the question marks because there's no parameter objects created. Now, we could deal with this a couple different ways. I'm going to deal with it the lazy way, just to demonstrate quickly how this works. So, I'll go here, configure data source. I'm going to say specify columns from a table or view. Yeah, I know. It's a weak moment. <laughs> and I'll pick them. 
I'm going to click advanced and I'm going to say generate, insert, update, and delete. 